Greetings. Welcome to our show, Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss various aspects of the paranormal and paranormal research. I am your host, Keith Johnson, the founder of New England Anomalies Research. With me is my co-host and co-founder, Sandra Johnson. Hello there. Happy summer. And of course, we have near members, David Grist. Say hello, David. Hello. And Valerie Moskowitz. Say hello, Val. Hello. They do that so well. <laughs> and here we are tonight celebrating our eighth year anniversary. Eight years on the Yay. air. Hooray! Yeah. Happy anniversary to us. Yes. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And uh, welcome to our studio audience, live studio audience. They are living. We like that. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike Scully here. But um, yeah, eight years on the air it's been. And uh, I'd like to start off by reading a little fan email we received. This is from Denise in California, Denise Moore. She's a paranormal investigator. She says, hi, Keith and Sandra. I'm a paranormal investigator in California. I came across your YouTube videos about a year ago. I've watched all of them and enjoyed them very much. Thank you for doing what you do. I look forward to seeing more. Keep up the excellent work. Sincerely, Denise. Thank you so much, Denise. That is Nice. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. We'll have to get out there sometime. And, and I want to thank our, our L.A. viewers. We've got a lot of fans out in L.A. that have been pulling marathons watching Ghost Star Near. So whoever you are, we want to thank you so much for your devotion and uh, marathon watching. Thank you so much. I, I'd also like, haven't we, Sandra? Yay, L.A. <laughs> Yay, L.A., right. <laughs> But uh, I'd also like to say hello to Michael Baxter, my good friend Michael Baxter of Warwick. And um, also, uh, we've uh, recently been on an investigation, an investigation in North Situate, Rhode Island, the wilds of North Situate. And as uh, many of you know, my brother Carl and my sister Cynthia and I grew up in North Situate. That's where we went to school and uh, spent our primary years there. And uh, there's a lot of legends associated with Situate, believe it or not. Um, and, and why is that, Keith? Why well, are there so many legends associated with Situate? Actually, a lot of that has to do with the advent of the North Situate Reservoir, the Situate Reservoir, which was put in um, in the uh, late 19-teens and early 1920s, uh, completed in the late 1920s. And uh, as necessary and beautiful as that is today, uh, it was also quite a tragedy and a heartbreak for many uh, of the residents and whole sections of the town. And you have to drive through there to just know how beautiful and how large it is. Whole sections of the town were just completely obliterated. And that meant uh, generations going back, their homesteads, their farms. Many people lost their livelihoods, their entire history. And it was rather heartbreaking at the time. It's no wonder that some residue of this emotion seems to stay on and linger in the wilds of North Situate. And there's many, many legends associated with it. And uh, of course, uh, Dave was there, Val was there, Sandra, of course, was there. And um, quite an adventure, adventure all around. Yeah, I don't think we actually captured any paranormal evidence. Um, a very large owl swooped by um, <laughs> right in front of the, uh, the windshield. That was a, a little bit unnerving uh, in the cemetery, um, but uh, um, the, the, the history is very interesting. Yes, the history. I mean, um, I think, uh, what is it? I think my notes say that um, uh, the town of Situate um, and nine villages and also part of North Situate uh, all, all went underwater, um, and approximately 4,000 to 5,000 bodies were moved uh, from cemeteries. Now that's, that's got to create some kind of an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously it's not surprising at all that supposedly some bodies just did not make the move. I mean, the Citrate Reservoir is delicious, it's beautiful, but um, also you don't know. You just don't know. Well, my understanding is that the, the Citrate Reservoir water is the second tastiest in the country. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, so are Roger Williams apples. 
Yeah. You know the story about that? <laughs> but uh, an inside story, Rhode Islanders. But, um, oh, by the way, uh, you cryptozoologists out there, and this is in your honor, I wore uh, Mukili Mbembe. Yeah, <laughs> means uh, stops the flow of rivers. Last time I saw a purple dinosaur, it was on PBS. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and back to the Citrate Reservoir. Anyway, we did, did explore, and um, one uh, famous thing that happened in the mid-19th century was the great squirrel hunt. They had a squirrel hunt there, and uh, they, how many yards high the uh, piles of squirrel carcasses were mounted? I have no Whoever idea. got the highest mound was the one who won, and somebody did win by a landslide, literally. I mean, um, they just uh, would kill as many squirrels as possible and just pile them up in piles. And that, that was in the uh, hunting house area, you know, like the area of Hunting House Brook, which we explored. I've never heard of that. Now, did they That's have to remove those squirrels in order to create the reservoir? Uh, I, I don't know. They were probably consumed long ago <laughs> by, by the populace. I think that the reservoir is haunted by squirrels. <laughs> oh, don't be surprised be. at that. It's haunted by a lot of things. Interesting theory, Val. Yeah, exactly. Well, we are going to uh, show you some of our footage that we took there. We're going to share that with you. And uh, you'll see us doing some of our research and some of our adventures. We were joined by our great friend, uh, Richard, Richard Palaszewicz. And... Uh, Mayor member extraordinaire. Exactly, exactly. And great haunted house guy. Yes. Yep. Very, very talented in that way. But um, he did join us and gave us some, uh, some information and gave us a little tour of some places too. So uh, I guess at this time, we will roll that footage so you can see our research and our exploration of North Situate and the Situate Reservoir. Well, here we are at the North Situate Public Library, Nathan. We should find a lot of information about the town of Situate and the history of the Situate Reservoir in here. There's all sorts of archives from years past. This town is also very special to me because I grew up here. Very nostalgic. I remember this town with great relish. So let's do some more research, Keith. Let's do it. Just pour water up. What was this clay, though? Clay. whole town upside down in the early 20s. You no, know they didn't. They just filled it with water. I know. <laughs> like I said, they flipped it upside down. <laughs> yeah, listen to this. The following verse is from Days of Destruction by Helen O. Larson. The city lawyer tried to buy one elderly man's home. He said, I was born here and I'll die here. So he cut his throat and died in his bedroom alone. I've heard that story. I have some information I wrote down on Barden's Mills near Ponagansett Falls. Mm -hmm. That's where we were the other night. Barden's Mill was a small village located in Western Situate just below the Barden Reservoir Dam. The village was named after John Barden, probably a descendant Thomas Barden, who was living in Rhode Island in 1675, same year King, King Philip's War broke mm -hmm. out. Barden was the owner of the local mill, and the nearby reservoir and the town were named after him. Following John Barden's death, the village was called Bettyville, in honor of Betty, Betsy Barden, the mill owner's widow. When the Ponagansett Manufacturing Company located its business there, the official name of the village was changed to Ponagansett. However, many people thought that name was too hard to pronounce, so they still called it Bettyville. Bettyville was located right next to the Ponagansett River and boasted an ironworks, a grist mill, and a sawmill. It also had a cotton mill, which was built there in 1826 and ran almost nonstop until the end of the century. The village only had about a dozen buildings, including the mills, a church, a school, a general store, a slaughterhouse, mill houses, where the workers lived, 
and one or two large homes where the mill owners lived. That's where we were the other night. Mm. Very interesting. I'm sure the uh, local cemetery, the Barden Cemetery, a lot of the uh, mill workers and owners are buried there as well. Well, I went through and took a photograph of every stone that was there. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much just family. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody remembers the um, Darby Road Inn, Darby Road in Situate. Mm -hmm. I'm about one of the few people who do seem to remember it many years ago. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very obscure now, but it was a very, very popular mm -hmm. place right along Danielson. Danielson Pike, people coming from uh, New York or Connecticut would often stop there. People yeah. on the honeymoons. Some big name entertainment at the time, way back when. And that was one of the first places I ever investigated when it was still there and abandoned. Like I said, this town is just so full of history. Yes. It's, and it's all been wiped away at one point, mm -hmm. and, but it still lingers. Yes. You know, which is nice. So. And along before Route 12, around Tunk Hill Road, actually, there's um, way in the woods. It's reservoir property now. There's a section there, kind of a field and some old foundations. Some people have referred to that as Grant Chester Meadows, and there have been. Uh, some people feel a very strange gravity pull there, mm -hmm. at least they used to. Almost like a time displacement was about to occur, but it never did. Oh. Like a gravitational pull, like they're being pulled in some direction when they're there at Grantchester Meadows. That's interesting. Was that mentioned as a, a place where a woman is seen in the field? Grantchester? Right nearby there. Yeah, right, right nearby there it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In an old cemetery where some of the Matthewsons are buried, of course, he being the founder of North Situate, Rhode Island. There's um, a cemetery there with a crypt where it used to be a little party spot. Of course, people disrespectfully left beer cans and uh, all sorts of litter around there too. Mm -hmm. However, back in the early 1970s, it was also used by a local cult. It used to perform ceremonies in there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, people found actual evidence of satanic cult worship in that area right around there. Mm. Supposedly something did manifest there at one time too. My brother did uh, kind of experimentation with uh, communication, communicating with spirits there back in the early 70s and he did say something manifested there. It was a uh, vaporous kind of humanoid form started to manifest and it just dissipated, evaporated. Oh. But it was witnessed by more than one person when it happened. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much history here. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean, just looking at these little books here, it's, you know, you look at these pictures and oh, the yes. roads are dirt. They're not even paved at this point in time. Um, you know, there's the road construction going on here because of the, the reservoir and... Um, it's just amazing how much was going on here. I still, I still have so many questions and I've done a lot of research. I, st I still have so many unanswered questions. There was one man who could have told me anything I wanted to know, anything. Really? He was actually one of the engineers during the construction of the Citrate Reservoir. His name was Sam Turtlelot. In fact, the field right across the way here is known as Turtle Lot Field, named after him in his honor. Mm -hmm. Could have told me anything I wanted to know, and I was very much looking forward to interviewing him. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1979 while I was living out in California briefly. So I was very sorry that I never got the chance to actually interview him. Yeah. There's so much he could have told me. It's interesting, he uh, actually spoke about when they were unearthing some of the cemeteries here in Situate. And of course, it's the law, if there's any living relatives, they have to view the exhumation, mm -hmm. they have to open the lid, even if the body is unidentifiable, if it's from another generation, relatives have to see that the um, coffin is opened. Yeah. Many of them were perfectly preserved, just lifelike, many of the bodies, and of course, 
once the French, the fresh air hit them, they started to uh, disintegrate right. very rapidly because of the open air. You wonder if that may uh, be attributed to some of the vampire lore. When you destroy a vampire, it crumbles to dust very rapidly, depending on its age. <laughs> Could be. The Old Schoolhouse by Helen O. Larson. It was a very sad day when we were told they were building a reservoir and our school would be sold. A man came one day, nailed up a sign for all to see. The sign read, Condemned. It meant heartbreak for me. It was then we were told an auctioneer would come one day to auction off the old schoolhouse to be torn down and taken away. Then the day arrived, the auction took place. The people began to bid. Tears rolled down my face. Going, going, gone, the auctioneer cried. And on that fateful day, something within me died. The old schoolhouse at Rockland now is used no more. We hear no more footsteps walk across the floor. I'll come back now and then to reminisce and see. But the old schoolhouse at Rockland will be just a memory. What have you found of interest there, Nathan? And a book by Tom D'Agostino, Abandoned Villages and Ghost Towns of New England. I found a poem about the same, the same author that you wrote, um, read. Mm -hmm. um, the land was condemned, the people were told. Everyone felt sorry for the folks who were old. People in Providence need clean water to drink. The city bought five villages. People had to sign with pen and ink. Some folks were born there, some lived there for years. They just couldn't seem to shake off the tears. When a lawyer told them the city was condemned, has condemned the land, they were, were bewildered and couldn't understand. To the scene of my childhood, I returned one day. I had a lump in my throat. It was difficult to keep the tears away. As I observed each loving place, it didn't look the same. Tears filled my eyes as I passed the old country lane. <coughs> I saw the road that led to a house where the children used to play. We spent many happy hours there every rainy day. The mill was destroyed when my father worked each day. Oh, the pain and heartache to see it torn down and carried away. And the white church where we used to pray was also destroyed and taken away. Then the little schoolhouse where the children used to go each day was also wrecked and the lumber taken away. Then the store was the next to go. There were five villages, all the houses were painted white. As you drove by, they were beautiful, a beautiful sight. One sad day, they were sold then, and you could never drive by the beautiful houses again. Our neighbors moved away one by one. This is a holding crypt in Situate, one of the local historical cemeteries. And uh, you can actually see the shelves where the coffins would be laid upon in the winter time when it was too cold to bury people in the ground. They'd have to wait for the spring thaw. Now, of course, this is still a party place. People uh, leave empty bottles here and trash. Very, very disrespectful, but you know, how can you stop it? Always goes on. But this was once a place of uh, cult activity worship. And uh, so a Christian, a group of Christians came here back in the early 70s when they found out it was being used for cult worship and uh, activity. So, a lot is going on here, and supposedly there was a spirit manifestation that was witnessed by more than one person. My brother Carl and a couple of his friends actually saw this start to materialize right in there at one time. That was back in the early 1970s. So this place has a long, long history. My friends and I 
used to come here years ago and do historical research here too when we were teenagers. Very, very historic. Some of the founding fathers of Situate are buried right here in this small cemetery. It goes back quite a ways. Some of the uh, stones don't even have etchings on it, at least none that are legible today. Very, very important to the history of Situate right here is this cemetery. Well, Nathan, we'll check to see if we captured any EVP on our audio recording. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, vehicle activity here. There was even a chopper in the air, so I think they're on to us. They're on to us. Yes. Let's go to our next location. Here we are at Peep Toad Pond in Situate, located right along Elmdale Road. This is uh, sometimes known as a great fishing spot. I went fishing here when I was around 10 years old, caught a little sunfish right away. It's also known as uh, a place for UFO activity. There have been UFOs sighted here, supposedly, and reports that people see strange, anomalous things at night, uh, things floating over. I guess some could be accounted for by swamp gas, but uh, some, some have actually um, been uh, the literal UFOs that people have reported seeing here. Uh, I know skyscrapers, they have done a lot of investigations here and there's been talk of sightings people have had. So a very, um, very different place at night. Strange things are reported here. They do seem to happen. And um, we've been told so by some reliable witnesses, members of Skyscrapers Incorporated as well. But this is Peep Toad Pond. This is the site of it. Possible UFO activity right here. Nathan, here we are in Situate at the Brownell lot. This is located right along Rocky Hill Road. And there's a young woman buried here. She died a month before her 17th birthday. Her name was Mary Eliza Brownell. When she passed away, it's said that the entire town went into mourning over her. Now, um, Obviously, this is long before the Situate Reservoir. The town of Situate was a lot bigger, a lot more populated anyway back then. The entire town went into mourning for her. Such was her reputation. And uh, she was um, obviously a lovely young girl. She was said to have been very, very beautiful. Now, I've heard that people walking by here, for some reason, have been attracted to her grave. For some reason, people seem pulled over here and um, they just want to come in here and see it, investigate this place. Right across, right across the street, there was a tanning factory that Mary Eliza's family owned. It was the uh, Brownell Tanning Factory and um, very, very prosperous business. Unfortunately, sometime during the 19th century, on a uh, winter night, it went up in flames just burst into flames because of the acid and the tanning properties they use, the chemicals, and uh, it's from the suet actually caught on fire. And it was said that you could see the flames from all over Situate. I'm sure at least in this area you could see them. It was on a February night. It's interesting, when I was a young boy myself, around 10 years old, I was nearby, I was in the woods farther down there, and I got this impression, it wasn't really a vision, it was more of an impression that there was some lovely young woman talking to me. And uh, she invited me to her house, just in my imagination, but I imagined her inviting me to her house because they said there were nice, freshly baked pies there and everything. And I even remember she had kind of auburn hair and a very, very pleasant voice. And I referred to her as the older girl. She was really she appeared as a teenager, but to me she was an older girl, and uh, I just like the feeling of kindness I got. Maybe it was just my imagination talking to me, because um, somebody talking that soothing and uh, imaginary companion like that. And uh, I don't know if anybody's ever 
captured anything here? I never have, as far as the paranormal goes. Do you think people have seen any phantom fires because of the a building across the street? It may be. It may be. If, if I could, I'd like to interview some people, see if anybody has noticed something like that here. But um, obviously that was very historic. That uh, was the news of the town when it happened many, many years ago in the 19th century. This is Hunting House Brook, usually very, very shallow and dried up, of course now it's completely dried up this time of year. Very magical place for our childhood. My brother and my sister and I and our neighborhood friends and also my mother and her generation used to come down here and picnic and play. Also, Mary Eliza Brownells generation would play around here many many years ago. Place is a wonderful spot. Richard, here we are at the uh, New Rockland Cemetery, of course, many graves were lo relocated here um, after the reservoir was being put in. People lost their homes and their livelihood, their family homes going back for generations. Uh, there are some graves that weren't totally removed from the Situa Reservoir. There were numerous little plots where there's still cemeteries laying around through the woods and kind of hidden from the public and everyone in uh, overgrowth. and headstone in the water. Actually still, in the water. In the water. Visible. Yeah, still visible. Wow. And uh, just one random headstone out in the woods that looks brand new that's uh, dated from the 1890s. What about people taking their lives? That's That's been documented of course. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, from the stories I've been hearing from uh, some fellow workers that a lot of people were so upset and distraught that their property was being taken and they actually took their own lives. There was at least one hanging, and uh, what well, else happened? Yeah, there were multiple hangings. That's primarily mm -hmm. how, unfortunately, they, they did what they did. Now, is there any, any folklore or eyewitness accounts that you know of, of any paranormal activity associated with that today? People claim to have seen things. I know there's the White Lady along Route 116. That's a local legend. Yeah, I've People heard a lot of her. folk stories about that, but I, I haven't personally seen in it but people do talk about it mm -hmm. you know but do you think there's any validation to that I mean you you've talked to these people uh, they do seem sincere when talking about it they do they do I mean I I, I tend to believe them you know mm -hmm. it seems something are there any unidentified graves here would you say there are a few mm -hmm. there are a few in here um, the unfortunate thing is when they did move a lot of the uh, cemeteries the coffins were made out of wood so a lot of the ground caved in around a lot of the, uh, the headstones here. Now I'm here to report by one of the engineers actually, one of the chief engineers of the Citrate Reservoir, Sam Turtelot. He said that of course when they were relocating the cemeteries they had to move the bodies. According to Rhode Island law they actually had to have a viewing if there were any family members still alive. He'd open these coffins, some of these bodies would be perfectly preserved, recognizable, 
from uh, generations past and of course once they hit the open air they started to disintegrate very rapidly and um, so I'm not surprised that uh, there are things going on here some people say that they are just uh, there are roaming spirits that are just upset that uh, their property was taken their livelihoods were taken what do you think about that I would, I would, I would come back if someone took my property the way it was taken. Unfortunately, you know. Yes. Uh, they did it, I guess, to better the the community itself and you know the whole state. But yeah, it was necessary. It but, was it was necessary but it was also very, very tragic. Tough, yeah. Very yeah. tragic. H. P. Lovecraft himself uh, vehemently disagreed with the uh, installation of the Citrate Reservoir. All those people losing their historic homes because he loved this area too. He he lived in Providence, but he'd take trips up here to Situate and to patch it with his friends. Beautiful area, though Situate. Yes, it really is. And of course, you see so much on the uh, watershed property that is actually the overgrowth now. A lot of old foundations, a lot of old businesses foundations. You can still find yep. lingering around. Especially this time of year when the reservoir is at its lowest. Yeah, you can actually yeah, see those yeah. foundations and the old mills and dams and mill houses and things. We still have a lot of that lingering in the woods and uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty neat to see. Yeah. You know, some you know, extravagant little houses that were out there that had coal heating with, you know, heated the houses with coal and formed some type of steam and had steam pipes going out and you could still find those little old coal furnaces oh, laying yeah. around in the woods so exactly you can actually see the mills the blacksmith shop remnants yeah, of that yeah. and the old oh, foundations yeah, yeah, yeah. now richard uh, of course this is all watershed property a lot of this is very inaccessible to people to we do we have a, we have a security that that cover the areas and uh they drive around day and night mm -hmm. making sure no one's trespassing no one's going near the reservoir and Due to the 9-11, you know, I think they have a little better security. We have cameras. We have a lot of, a lot of, secu a lot of security features that, you know, mm. keep people off the property. Yeah. So it's a very, very secure, safe place. It but is. do it not is. trespass. Uh, you'll definitely get caught. Yep. <laughs> you'll definitely get caught. Right. Well, that's, that actually keeps away a lot of the uh, pollution and the litter and things like that, it too, does. which is good. It does. Yeah, and we have safe drinking water thanks to that. Yeah, and it's good water. It's one of the best. It is. Thank you very much. We are back. And that was uh, our exploration of Situate. Of course, in the limited amount of time we had, I mean, you could spend weeks actually going through all the history. And um, there's great documentation that's available both online and at the North Situate Public Library, and we're very grateful to the North Situate Public Library for their assistance. And um, I highly recommend a trip to North Situate this fall. It's really beautiful. Oh yes, yes, it's 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 gorgeous. It's really beautiful, and uh, a lot of people these days don't really contemplate too much on the history of so long ago. Um, when a lot of people did lose their homes. Now, there was a similar situation in uh, Quabbin, Quabbin, Massachusetts, in the uh, Boston region there. Yes. You know, where, um, uh, a lot of people that, that was in the, uh, that uh, post dated the Citrate Reservoir. That was in the late, um, I guess the early 1930s yeah, to the late 1930s. It was um, actually, the uh, it began construction in 1922 and then ended with the actual flooding of the Swift River Valley in 1939. Mm -hmm. And 2,500 people had to relocate. So they really? flooded four mm -hmm. towns. Um, and this was to make fresh water for the Boston area. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft very much um, disagreed with the uh, advent of the Citra Reservoir. And of course it was necessary, but he was um, so in love with the uh, architecture and the history of the place. He didn't want, didn't want the people to lose their homes, didn't want all these sections of the town to be obliterated. And you have to think how huge, humongous Situate was and how densely populated during the, uh, especially the 19th century, 18th mm -hmm. and especially the 19th century. And Quabbin, similar situation. In fact, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft took an interest in that too. Uh, two of his stories, the uh, Colorado Space and the Dunwich Horror, are uh, set there in that setting of Quabbin. And uh, hello to uh, Quabbin Paranormal as well. <laughs> hello. So, um, well, anyway, as Sandra said, please do 
visit Situate and uh, contact us if anybody has any further information or if you'd like to know information on the Situate Reservoir and the history. And uh, that wraps up our show for this evening. And we'll be back next month with a brand new show. And I want to thank you for watching. Take care. Thank you for joining us on our eighth year anniversary. Stay safe. God bless. Good night.